we're on. Okay, it is Friday, November 16th, 2018, 3.04 p.m. This is the regular monthly meeting of the Augsburg Bridge and Port Authority. The meeting is called to order. Mr. Davis, have any letters or communications to the board? We have several. Um, we've been very busy this uh, past week with uh, uh, Essential Air Service Advocacy. We have advocacy letters and responses from uh, several uh, universities and local agencies in favor of the um, SkyWest proposal. And in addition to that, um, there are some things that are coming as well. So um, in the interest of time, I'll dispense with them, but there's about uh, 15, 20 pages of uh, uh, documents there, including a uh, resolution from Ogdensburg City Council in support of the SkyWest proposal, Clarkson University, Environmental Science and Forestry, Mapco Auto Parks, the um, uh, Congresswoman Stefanik, and it looks like we're missing a couple more there as well. There's also news articles in the uh, Utica Observer Dispatch regarding the brewery tanks that arrived from Germany, some Watertown Daily Times news articles, and um, a few articles relating to essential air service. Okay. Is there any questions or comments from uh, the board? I need a letter of communications. If not, uh, Mr. Adriano, uh, the minutes of October 26th, have you had an opportunity to review those? I have indeed. And? Uh, they uh, seem good to me. Okay. Is there a motion to accept the minutes as submitted? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Those minutes are accepted. Presentation and reports. Mr. Davis? Uh, just very briefly, uh, Stephanie and I uh, traveled up to Ottawa uh, this, for two days this week to attend the How to Market Your Airport session. We got some very valuable information out of there, and it was uh, interesting having the North American Conference right in our backyard. So that was uh, uh, very interesting and very worthwhile, and uh, some of the ideas out of there I think we can put to use at Ogdensburg Airport. Anyone have any questions or comments? I have one. Jim, nice to see you back. Thank you. <laughs> it's good to be back. I just finally looked up and saw you over there. <laughs> good. Thank you. Finance reports? Yes. Um, the bridge traffic report is in here, but I haven't been able to find it and put my fingers on it. I looked at it and reviewed it and shows... October traffic oh, there we go. at a negative 7.7% for autos and all other trucks, campers, etc. were up 3.8%. So overall for the year, autos are down 1% and trucks and other crossings are up 1%. Revenue was fairly flat from a year ago. Okay. Any questions on that report? I know what the Canadian dollar is at what? Maybe 74 cents now? Or? Something mm -hmm. close to that. In yes. That neighborhood. Not favorable for us at, the, at this right. point. Right. I'm sure that has something to do with that. And the weather hasn't been uh, overly cooperative either. So that doesn't help. Questions, comments, or anyone else? Move on. So there should, once we hit the second set of flights from Allegiant, that tends to pick up a little bit with the Tampa flights, which will start up in mid-December. Um, so we may not see a lot of big increases in November, but December we sure so should. We have that airport activity report that I see that somewhere. It's unchanged from the last uh, the last time it was issued. So because no. we'll be um, it has been changed up? because we did not submit one in October. 
and uh, these are the end of the month for October that Anne Marie uh, distributed. So it was uh, in the staff reports, right? Is that where I saw it? Um, I, no, I think they were supposed to be with the uh, with the agenda? with the board agenda. Yes. Yeah, they should be right on here, but they're not. So. Okay, well, okay. Well, um, I, I have a simple copy here. I can let you know what's going on. Okay, um, employments for the year uh, ending October 31st are 2,036. Deployments are 1,413. Uh, particularly with um, the Allegiant flight, we had 1,262 passengers uh, leave us. I'm sorry, um, for what time period? In October. October, okay, thanks. What are we up to in terms of year to date as well? Oh, Do you have that there? Uh, I don't have, let's see. Um, year, oh, let's keep there, excuse me. Maybe I didn't bring that. We will get that file and email it out to you so that we use yes, it. Yes, but um, for this month, the month of October, um, <coughs> Allegiant in plane 1,262 passengers and deplaned 918 passengers here in Ogdensburg. Okay. Everything's going okay? It is until this morning. <laughs> do we have, That's going very We have one well. flight in tomorrow? Yes, we do. Uh, it's Cape, an evening flight. Cape Air canceled today, pretty much? Cape Air canceled the, the first flight. Uh, the second and third flights are going. Or the, the second one's gone, the third one is still good. scheduled. Good. So obviously, staff did a good job out there at the runway. Absolutely. I, I can't say enough good things about that staff. Are you going to take any credit for that? No. 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 It's all my guys. Right. I mean. <laughs> also, that, was, that was your chance. I know. Yeah, it's I know. gone. You do a wonderful job. Also, don't forget, we're boosting our flight numbers as well. We still have the buy one, uh, get one outbound promotion going on for uh, both Cape Air and Allegiant. And that runs uh, from... Uh, the end of last month all the way through the end of February. Okay. Oh, thanks, Stephanie. Yes. Any questions for Stephanie and airport? No? Board activity report? Do we have that too or is that included in that other one? I can't speak to that one because I don't know. Um, um, I think, Jim, you put out, uh, you received everything, all of the uh, invoices for the uh, windmill project? Yes. And everything else? I, that's all I been was not, however, able to get a report together because I blew I just, up. Before understandably. I, before I got it done and haven't had enough time yet to get it compiled. So, okay. But everything has been billed and we've started yes, to receive. I think, that, I think the project went very, very well in almost all cases. Um, we had a couple of invoices trickle through that mm -hmm. we didn't get quickly enough, but um, we were able to get our Vestas payments in just about the time some of our vendors were cranky about not getting paid timely. Um, so we were able to keep them satisfied and everybody okay. at this point, I believe, is paid in full. So Everybody. all of the in, all of the, the invoices and charges have been collected. Okay. I think there's one small invoice outstanding for twenty eight hundred dollars, and then I think all of the bills have been paid. Okay. Unless there's a straggler that surprises us, um, right. so we're in pretty good shape with that. It came out just about ideally with what we budgeted. Oh, good. Um, the other the other thing I can say is that we. We projected awfully high for our longshoremen wages. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if that comes from two years ago, um, but this year we didn't. We were not even close to the number we projected in the budget. So that's a good thing. 
because I think the project went along soundly and safely in every respect. So he's I haven't heard anything different. Uh, last <coughs> Steve, have you heard everything went very well? No. Oh yes, everything with that and uh, no damages, no uh, safety issues. Okay. Which um, is a you know, knock on wood, but that's been very good for us. Yeah. And then we were able to like to go to Jim's point about lesser labor costs. Um, we've gotten more efficient in how we, you know, with the knowledge of our people, right. and then, um, and we're also able to pass that on to the customer. Whereas um, there's some things we see, and we ask them about that, and just and we show them what we've done for them, as far as um, trying to reduce rent rentals on, and things with uh, the equipment and things like that. So, you know, hand in hand with that, that. Uh, that bodes well anyway for the customers that we we had this year. Good, good. And I know we just received <coughs> that last ship, and I'm I'm sure we still have uh, some outstanding accounts receivable on that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So that hasn't been very old. But Seven anything invoiced yet? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yes. 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 Good. 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 They, they've invoiced uh, the unloading on that part, but the the tailgating that. The loadout will come in another week, so that that part of it, right. um, it's not as much as the the other stuff, but it'll be uh, another billing that we'll have to do. And I would assume salt's been flying out today. Or? Yeah, actually, the most trucks I've seen, mostly on the Morton side. I don't know what contracts those are, but um, once the roads were cleared, they started showing up here, um, which is really good yeah. to generate that. Yeah. Good, good, good. Um, Looking at my time, I don't want to. I know you got to leave. Uh, <clears throat> there was a, a report from um, Adam on that last ship regarding um, an expense that we charge. That I think before we're done today, we need to talk about that. Okay. All right. Anything else for the port? Okay, next. <coughs> Income expense report, balance sheet. financial statements. Okay, and again, I apologize for the short notice. I did get it to you yesterday afternoon, so I was happy to be able to do that. <coughs> I got back to work on Monday and feverishly tried to put those together. Um, the uh, September reports, uh, in a nutshell, are fairly normal from what I could tell going through my review. Um, in the bridge, uh, the maintenance expenses look to be way over budget for the month, and that's because the bridge inspection fees are hitting right now. I think there's there's more to hit in October. Um, were those fees uh, budgeted in any period? I believe those fees were budgeted over 12 months because I think I took the logic in December when I didn't know much. Mm -hmm. um, if I didn't know how it allocated, I, I blew it out over the whole year. That's so fine. that will catch up to itself once everything's yeah. posted. So um, mm -hmm. we're just having a, a nice year, albeit the, uh, the revenue shortfalls. Mm -hmm. um, Airport revenues in September are going to be the lowest they are at any point in the year because Allegiant doesn't fly. So those numbers are still on target for budget. I believe they're going to come in strong and satisfactory and hopefully a little over budget on the revenue side because uh, the airport operation will be, I want to say, kind of nice when we get done looking at it in May. We'll probably still have some losses, but we have cut a few contracts that will show over the next six months under well under budget because we won't adjust the budget for the contracts we've gotten rid of. Um, and then the revenues will be at their highest peak in December, January, February, March. So airport gets real busy in the winter time and. Uh, slows down in the summertime because of our Florida connection. But those numbers looked pretty good to me. Um, 
and the Port of Agensburg, as we said, the wind turbine project is uh, winding down at the end of September, um, but there are still some revenues and some expenses hitting the books. So if you review the Port of Agensburg detail, it will show you how much revenue is being booked there. And unfortunately, I was not able to get to the budget adjustments we talked about last month or two months ago in the meeting. I missed last month. Um, so I will try to make sure that is done by the time you see us again. Mm -hmm. um, border station lease is all in place. I think we reported previously that the 20-year uh, the lease, they've agreed to most of the financial terms. Um, and that was a very impressive negotiation. I've got to give John Reesh a lot of credit. Um, he, he provided those numbers and they they bought them, which is a good thing because my numbers were a lot lower than his um, based on conversations we'd had with GSA previously. But uh, we, we got that lease. It's I think now it's at the stage where it has been given a <coughs> six month extension. Yes from October to March of 2019 to work out the, the logistics of the expectations of both parties. So, for example, Border Station can ask us to buy and pay for a new security system, which with Homeland Security being what it is today, could be astronomical numbers of dollars that we have to pay for so we're trying to so satisfy what those things might be and who's going to pay for them and et cetera, et cetera. Um, details are important. <laughs> the details, yeah. Mm -hmm. So any questions on the income statements? Everybody recalls there's six location invoice or six location income statements and then the consolidated statement that adds it all together, so that's the same as it has been in previous months. So if you're still getting used to looking at them, uh, if you have any questions along the way, just please let me know. Um, budget variances um, <clears throat> are pretty much the same the, uh, as, as they have been. I told you about the, uh, the bridge inspection fees, which look a little out of whack in the current month, but if you look at the year-to-date for the bridge, they're they're pretty much falling in line. So on the expense side, I think we're going to see that for the most part throughout the year. Um, I trust there will be a surprise here or there that go the other way. Um, but the revenues seem to be on target. I think I still, I still believe that the only, there's two discrepancies in the budget that I believe had a fairly modest impact on the budget in that uh, that was the green bin projections. Remember hearing me talk about that? We put a hundred thousand or a hundred and twenty thousand dollars of revenues in the budget and we're not seeing that or we're not seeing that yet. Um, and then on the bridge revenues I believe that I've concluded that I, I missed the Canadian discount on the Canadian bridge tolls when I was preparing the budget last year. The e-transit system gives me gross numbers and I was too new and too inexperienced to realize that I needed to discount the Canadian monies. So the Canadian, you'll see the bridge tolls have been a little bit under budget on the revenue side, and I think that's, I'm concluding that that's why, that I just missed that. So, any other questions on the financial statements or the budgets or the balance sheet at this point? I think this format really uh, makes it, it has meaning to Easy me. to follow, yeah. and I, I will, I will, pledge to make a little more detail on this narrative because this week I just I was running short on time because mm -hmm. I was out for so long. Very helpful. So. Thank you for giving us Good. the narrative you did.
Yep, that's, uh, that's good, very good. Anyone have any questions of Jim? Comments? Let's move on. For the business development uh, report, John Reach sends his regrets. Uh, he had the creeping crud pretty badly today, so he actually is uh, off this afternoon. Building occupancy report uh, pretty much remains unchanged with, uh, we've got one uh, client that is uh, closing up shop over there in the industrial park and we're working that out uh, presently where they will pay the full amount that's owed under the term of the lease. Questions? Okay. Next, I believe, is the un unfinished business. This will be the uh, unfinished business item, the approval of the appointment of the internal control officer. As you recall, there's some discussion uh, previously about the appointing the CFO as the internal control officer, and uh, it's been uh, on the unfinished business for the last two months. I wonder if there's any new information on that. Not that I'm aware of. There is none. Mr. Chairman, I'd be prepared to make a motion to make an appointment. Uh, if that's the timing. Even, yes. I would move that, that we name the uh, Chief Financial Officer to serve the function also as an internal control officer. Second that. Yeah. Scotchin? There's some notes on my phone, so I'm not texting. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way that I knew how to. Uh, <laughs> nowadays, you know, you never know, especially. Anyway, so um, so Frank was really helpful, gave us a memo. I also reviewed the, the statutory language with regards to it. Um, and I certainly agree with the point that we've discussed before that we don't have the funds to hire someone new to be the internal control officer. Uh, that said, um, unless there's some persuasive arguments made in the next, you know, while we're having this discussion, I plan on voting no on this motion, so I just wanted to outline why. Um, so the, the language of the, the statute, uh, which is Chapter 18, Article 45, uh, Section 950, um, uh, basically says, I don't want to read the entire thing, but it says that internal control is a process that integrates activities, plans, blah, 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 where's the section I want. Um, the uh, objectives of an internal control system include, but are not limited to, the safeguarding of assets, checking the accuracy and reliability of accounting data and financial reporting, promoting the effectiveness and efficacy of operations, ensuring compliance, and it goes on from there. Um, and it also states uh, that the, um, internal audit, which is a, a part of this chapter, as I understand it, says an appraisal activity established by the management of an organization for the review of operations as a means of assuring conformance with management policies and effectiveness of internal control and conducted in confor uh, conformance with generally accepted standards for internal auditing. Uh, and then goes on to say that uh, one of the things we're supposed to be doing is designating an internal control officer who shall report to the head of the agency to implement and review the internal control responsibilities established. So as I read that, that means the internal control officer is responsible for doing those things I just outlined, which is safe, you know, safeguarding assets, checking accuracy and reliability of accounting data, financial reporting, doing the internal audit, et cetera, all of that stuff. Um, and so, you know, the reason why I'm voting no is not because of anything against Jim. You know, I think he does an excellent job, and there's there's nothing nothing against him, and I hope it's not taken that way. Um, it, it's just that, as as my understanding is that this is sort of like a checks and balances, um, and so you have the CFO who's responsible for all this stuff, and I, I also reviewed his job description, um, and it said that the CFO's job is sort of all this stuff, and so the per, a purpose of an internal control officer would be to be the check on that and make sure that the CFO is doing his job properly and you know there's no errors and things like that. Um, so I don't see how we can appoint someone in an oversight position who is overseeing themselves. Uh, and, and to me, you know, I, so, I sort of get the argument that we feel like we have to do this because you know, we just need one. You know, we're supposed to have an internal control officer, we don't have money to, to hire an external one, so we're, you know, let's just appoint someone and move on. Um, but sort of in my view, 
that's sort of pulling, trying to pull the wool over people's eyes and saying, oh yeah, we really do have an internal control officer, but in fact we don't because the person who's the internal control officer is really overseeing themselves, which you know violates checks and balances. Um, and like at, at the end of the day, you know, I thought a lot about this, and I'm, I guess I'm, I'm also Wade had mentioned at some point that there was some IG training uh, where the state, even though there was no written feedback at that, at some point that there was something said that we can't use a CFO as an ICO. Um, so for me, um, I'm the kind of person, I guess, that I prefer sins of omission over sins of commission. Um, and so I'd rather say to the state and say to everyone who says, oh, you got to have an internal control officer, say, look, we don't have the money for an internal control officer. We'd love to appoint one, give us some money, and we'd be happy to do what we'd like. But I'd rather be honest and say, we cannot do that because uh, we don't want to appoint the guy overseeing himself as the internal control officer, and we're sort of trying to play a shell game, in my opinion, by doing that. Um, I'd much rather be honest with everyone and say, sorry, love to do it, don't have the money. Um, and again, that, to me, that's you know a sin of omission, which I'm more comfortable with than voting in favor of appointing someone to a position that I believe would violate the statute if we were to appoint that person. Uh, even though I understand there's no case law on that um, and anything like that, but that's just my reading of the statute and how I feel about it. So, um, you know, I, I'd be happy to be persuaded that I'm incorrect about this. Um, you know, again, it's nothing against Jim. Um, it's, it's just that I feel like to comply with the statute, um, we either have to appoint an independent person to that or just say to everyone, love to do it, don't have the money. So that, that's my take on it. Thank you. Anybody? Go ahead. I would speak to the uh, reasons for appointing Jim. Mm -hmm. I think that there are some forms which the administration has to fill out periodically that uh, where, where not having appointed a internal control officer uh, damages some of our reporting, the quality of our reporting. I don't see this as a shell game at all. I think it's very clear what's going on. Anybody who looks at it is going to know exactly what's going on. No lies nothing covered up, all clear, not in keeping with the rules. Having spent the bulk of my life in small businesses, I'm very used to trying to get the point of the regulation accomplished as opposed to being able to follow the regulation. There have been times, for instance, when the requirement said you need to divide the red and white bands on the radio tower into 11 stripes if it's over 350 feet. <laughs> and then the rule changed and it said seven stripes. So we waited until it needed to be painted before we changed it to seven stripes. Because cost $25,000 to paint the tower, and if you paint it after four years instead of after 10 years, it's, you know, it's throwing money. Every FCC inspector who came and looked at it said, well, the next time you paint it. Now, the rule said this, but the inspectors thought that was perfectly fine, and we did. We changed the pattern. I look at it this way. I think we do what we can do, and I think that this is not just window dressing, that Jim, in fact, would be performing a function where there would be record keeping, testing, and so forth that would be constructive. And so I think we're better off doing something constructive than we are to ignore the direction. And I understand that it's in violation of what's been directly said, but it's in keeping with the practice of a number of other similar authorities with what our council has told us and with what our administrators are advising us. So I think let's do it. And um, if we get a tie vote, um, then it will be defeated. And I think. Uh, 
there is a case here for uh, taking action as opposed to sitting here and not taking action while we stare at our navel. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't have anything to add. He's done pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to say I think it's a real, I think it's a really good arg I have a good argument. Like um, again, I, I understand it's pragmatic. Um, I understand that there are forms that we need to fill out. Um, you know, I understand the pragmatism, and again, I have no doubts that Jim could do this. I just feel like that in my reading of the statute and in my reading, of, you know, and, and also understand that we have been specifically advised not to do this um, through this IG training at some point, which was before I was on the board, um, that I don't, you know, and, and to take your radio tower example, you know, it's, it's up there, everyone could, everyone could see it. Um, I feel it's a little, to me it's just a little different when we say yes, we have a, an internal control officer, but in, in, again, in my view, that internal control officer who we appointed to that violates the advice we were given. And also, again, in, in my interpretation of the statute, wouldn't be capable of giving oversight of themselves. Um, and so that's why it's, it's different to me. Um, but again, I, I appreciate, the pragmatism, and I appreciate that that argument. I just sure. uh, feel very strongly that I don't want to vote in favor of something that, in my view, <laughs> would violate a statute. Um, so that's why. Yeah. Well, I begin to call the question. Right. What you want to? I'll second. I want to add something. Let, let me no, 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 you want to call the question? No, 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 yeah, yeah, let me retract. No, if I know, I'm looking at the time. Um, actually, I, I agree with Joe, but I also understand your point, Chris, and we've mm -hmm. talked about this for a year now. I'm wondering if somehow we can modify this, that uh, if we do appoint our chief fiscal officer, our financial officer, as the internal control, somewhere in there worded so that a audit committee or finance committee uh, oversees the uh, financial yeah. aspects of the uh, authority. So it's not entirely on Jim that uh, member or members of a committee uh, in conjunction with Jim sit and review this. I would think that would be part of the finance committee's role, right? And I, I think it would be especially uh, serious part of their mission uh, if we were to do this because yeah. of all the things that Joe said. You also have Absolutely. your independent audit group that mm -hmm. could be pulled in to yeah. help establish a series of audits and reviews that we would do. Um, they provide an additional level of oversight to the authorities financial systems. I do. Albeit from a distance. And but that, they can, agree they can be called in to provide that additional oversight and most likely at no additional cost because the, in, a, in their opinion they probably already do that. Mm -hmm. they, they test our internal controls when they come in each year. Um, but I think we need to set it up so it's clear in a resolution that if we do have an internal control officer who might be one and the same as a chief fiscal financial officer, only along with the oversight and we state it, mm -hmm. whatever that is. I think that sounds good. It has right. to be able to satisfy that internal control yes. part. That's where Which the what, external I mean, Joe's absolutely work. right as far as I'm concerned that by doing this, we're not following what the state wants us to do, understanding, Chris, of course, your point that we can't because of financial constraints and other constraints, but we need to make sure um, the board, either as a committee or as a whole, oversees what's going on. It's the, it's the only way to logically make that work. Yeah. Yeah. We're and doing just what John try said. Try to be yeah. responsible. Right. So, yeah. It's, right. it's so the lesser we, of the two, I don't know if I want to call it the lesser of the two evils, but it's, <laughs> you've got to do something. I think it's, it's a, a really yeah, good, I think, I think it's a, it's a compromise problem. we have to come to because as stated here, the resolution, 
I'm not in favor of the resolution as stated. Mm -hmm. But I understand. Well, let's modify the resolution and. Uh, uh, well, I'm not so so sure where we can do that in the next minute. Why don't you table the motion to next month? Another three weeks is not going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Chris, so well, you can get the resolution. So, so that it, uh, it we'll want to modify it so that it includes uh, a reference to the uh, finance audit committee. Uh, doing periodic oversight and review. Uh, yeah. And uh, I know that at our last meeting I mentioned I would talk to Don Hooper. I have not yet. But I really am anticipating that we'll be able to get a set of steps that Hoop recommends that we yeah. take periodically yeah. and uh, with a recommended frequency that will be very revealing. You know, there are procedures that don't go beyond the scope of this committee's capacity, yeah. which would periodically test some of the reports that we get. Does this make sense, Jim? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that if we follow procedures that are responsibly drafted in order to try to accomplish the goals and the mandates of the yeah. internal control yeah. officer that We'll be doing, we would be doing the best we can. Yes. It's not going to be perfect, but we'll get as close as we can. Right. I guess you know, part of my concern about that is that it, it seems that under the, uh, under the statute, I was just reading this here, which is uh, section 2932, um, you know, says in the event the governing board does not establish an internal audit function pursuant to this, I, I guess, isn't this, isn't, I'm not sure that inoculates us from the problem because that's already part of our job as a board is oversight of the finances and that element of internal control is, is already part of what we're supposed to be doing so I, I'm not sure how reiterating in the motion that we're just going to keep doing what we already have a responsibility to do inoculates us from the fact that we appointed someone in our internal 